communion this morning. Today we also will have the baptism of Sidney Decker at the 1045 service. Just a note about that. Um, the entrance hymn this morning is hymn 593. It's a baptism hymn, See This Wonder in the Making. And please note that there is a, a pronoun you have to fill in there, and Sydney is a little girl, so we will use the pronoun her there. There is an insert for enrollment form for automatic giving in your bulletin today. It's a great way uh, to give to the church. If you'd like more information, uh, please talk to Chris in the church office about that. This morning, we'd like to thank um, Bethlehem Handbell Ringers for being and joining with our Trinity uh, Ringers today with a joint handbell choir this year under the direction of um, Eric Schmidt, who is uh, one of our Lutheran High School teachers. We thank you for sharing your musical gifts with us together as we work together in God's kingdom here in Sheboygan through our musical talents. Please join us in between services for a time of fellowship in the lounge. At 9.30, there will be a brief prayer with the Sunday school uh, children and adults in the gymnasium. This morning, Sunday school will then begin preparation for the children's Christmas service. We ask that all adults join us in the gym at 9.30 for a regularly scheduled voters' assembly meeting. New voters are welcome. Any members of Trinity 18 years and older are eligible to become voting members of Trinity. Today we will review a draft of Trinity's 2020 work program and budget. Please take a look at the yellow insert in your bulletin today and see the report of the work of our church council. Tomorrow morning we will begin having uh, the entryway, the narthex and the entryway as you come into church uh, being redone uh, through a memorial gift to Trinity. Uh, all of the wallpaper will be removed and repainted um, it will take approximately three weeks, uh, so please bear with us as there will be a couple of messes in the next few weeks, um, but it should be beautifully done when, when, uh, when all is said and done. The best way to follow along is to place your worship folder in the back of your hymnal. The panel serves as a guide. Simply go to the, to the page indicated. That's it for announcements. Please stand and greet each other. The bells will call us to worship. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Please kneel for confession and absolution. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake, forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of the Word and servant of our Lord, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
peace, let us pray to the Lord. the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Lord this is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. and ever-living God, you have given exceedingly great and precious promises to those who trust in you. Rule and govern our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may live and abide forever in your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading for the 24th Sunday after Pentecost is from Malachi chapter 4. For behold, the day is coming, burning like an oven, when all the arrogant and all evildoers will be stubble. The day that is coming shall set them ablaze, says the Lord of hosts, so that it will leave them neither root nor branch. But for you who fear my name, the Son of Righteousness shall rise with healing in its wings. You shall go out leaping like calves from the stall. And you shall tread down the wicked, for they will be ashes under the soles of your feet on the day when I act, says the Lord of hosts. Remember the law of my servant Moses, the statutes and rules that I commanded him at Horeb for all Israel. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the great and awesome day of the Lord comes. And he will turn the hearts of the fathers to their children, and the hearts of children to their fathers, lest I come and strike the land with the decree of utter destruction. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Blessed are those whose strength is in you and whose heart are the highways to Zion. 
The epistle is from 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. Now we command you, brothers, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you keep away from any brother who is walking in idleness and not in accord with the tradition that you receive from us. For you yourselves know how you ought to imitate us, because we were not idle when we were with you, nor did we eat anyone's bread without paying for it. But with toil and labor we worked night and day, that we might not be a burden to any of you. It was not because we do not have the right, but to give you in ourselves an example to imitate. For even when we were with you, we would give you this command. If anyone is not willing to work, let him not eat. For we hear that some among you walk in idleness, not busy at work, but busybodies. Now such persons we command and encourage in the Lord Jesus Christ to do their work quietly and to earn their own living. As for you, brothers, do not grow weary in doing good. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to St. Luke, the 21st chapter. While some were speaking of the temple, how it was adorned with noble stones and offerings, Jesus said, As for these things that you see, the days will come when there will not be left here one stone upon another that will not be thrown down. And they asked him, Teacher, when will these things be, and what will be the sign when these things are about to take place? And he said, See that you are not led astray, for many will come in my name, saying, I am he, and the time is at hand. Do not go after them. And when you hear of wars and tumults, do not be terrified, for these things must first take place. But the end will not be at once. Then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes and in various places famines and pestilences. And there will be terrors and great signs from heaven. But before all this, they will lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and prisons. And you will be brought before kings and governors for my name's sake. This will be your opportunity to bear witness. Settle it therefore in your minds not to meditate beforehand how to answer. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom which none of your adversaries will be able to withstand or contradict. You will be delivered up even by parents and brothers and relatives and friends. And some of you they will put to death. You will be hated by all for my name's sake. But not a hair of your head will perish. By your endurance you will gain your lives. But when you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, then know that its desolation has come near. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let those who are inside the city depart, and let not those who are out in the country enter it. For these are days of vengeance to fulfill all that is written. Alas, for women who are pregnant, and for those who are nursing infants in those days, for there will be great distress upon the earth and wrath against this people. They will fall by the edge of the sword and be led captive among all nations. And Jerusalem will be trampled underfoot by the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. And there will be signs in sun and moon and stars, and on the earth distress of nations and perplexity because of the roaring of the sea and the waves, people fainting with fear and with foreboding of what is coming on the world. For the powers of the heavens will be shaken." And then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now, when these things begin to take place, straighten up, raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. This is the gospel of the Lord.
text for this morning's sermon is taken from the gospel lesson with special emphasis on the following words. Jesus said, you will be hated by all for my name's sake, but not a hair of your head will perish. This is our text. You may be seated. Dear brothers and sisters of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Energizer Bunny commercials boast that their batteries last infinitely longer than any other. I don't know if that's true or not. The motto for their commercials is this, still going. Now during these last days of the church year, our focus is on the end, the end of time. And that's good because we need to deal with the fact and with the truth that our life in this world and the world itself are going to end. That's what's going to happen. That's the reality. No matter what our attempts to save it and ourselves. Yet to date, this fallen world is still going, and the fact that you're still here means that you're still going too. But this morning, I invite you to ponder the fact that the world's attempt to get rid of the Lord and his church have failed. The killing of the Son of God and the hatred and persecution of those who believe in him throughout history have not stopped the Lord and his church. We're still going. Not even death could stop Jesus because he rose from the dead just as he promised with witnesses. He did it just the way he said he would do. And your death in Christ will not stop you either. It really won't. Because Jesus, the risen Lord, has promised, quote, whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. As the psalmist reminds us, the Lord will preserve your coming in and going out from this time forth and forevermore. We will be still going with life as it was created and redeemed to be throughout all eternity because of the love of God and Jesus Christ our Lord. To date, the sinful nature of all humanity, including our own sinful self, is also still going. And this is a problem for all of us. Now, there are those who are outside of us who seek to harm us, but there's also something within us that leads us into self-destructive behaviors. Now, before we go pointing our fingers at other people and how they hurt us, because it's really easy to do because of our sinful nature that still is a foe to contend with, before we do that, I want you to think about a few things, mainly this. And a pastor by the name of John Kleinig talks about this. He writes, we imagine that people who do evil in the church and in the world, that they are our enemies. But they are not. It's really easy, right? We point at other people and what they do and the terrible, horrible things that they do. And we see them as our enemies, but they're not. Spiritually speaking, we as Christians have no human enemies. You heard me right. We have no human enemies. Let's go to the scriptures. The Apostle Paul stresses the fact, quote, that our struggle is not against human flesh and blood. That's not the enemy. What is the enemy? The enemy is the evil one. And the forces of evil that he promotes. Now, I know a lot of people have a hard time believing that there is a devil, that there is a 
someone who, who is at work doing evil, but if you really thought about it a while and, and put it together, it makes total sense. Just the, as there is a good God who does good things, there is an evil one, but he's not the opposite of God. He doesn't have the power and authority of God. He's a fallen angel. He's the opposite of Michael, who is like God, but not God. The evil one. That's the enemy. Satan has hacked God's creation, planting a virus of sin and death in us, just like what so often happens in our computers today. They get hacked with a virus. And when this happens, the computer doesn't operate like it's supposed to operate. And then it even dies sometimes. Well, we don't operate the way we're supposed to operate. And that's clear that we hear even in this gospel lesson what Jesus tells us about what's going to happen. It says, he says this, About us, you will be delivered up even by parents and brothers and relatives and friends, and some of you will be put to death. That's not the way it's supposed to work. Fathers are supposed to love their children. Mothers are supposed to love their children. But think about even today, we have parents who kill their children while they're still in the the womb. And they want to promote those... Um, activities that will kill those little children even when they've come to term or are halfway out. That's barbaric. That's not the way we were created to operate. Fathers and mothers love their children with everything they are and have. That's the way God created us. And that's the way he redeemed us to love. But it's, it's all out of whack. The world has been infected and an evil one has done this. But he is an evil one who has been overcome. With the resurrection of our Lord, with his death and resurrection, with his ascension into heaven, and his coming by his spirit at work through his word at Pentecost and here today, we witness the fact that Jesus is still going. Oh, that evil one, (laughs) he's at work in this world. But the good one, Jesus, who's God himself in the flesh, he's still going too. Coming in and going out from this time forth and even forevermore. We are in the end times now. Lots of theories about the end times, but this is what the scriptures say. The end times were inaugurated. They began when Jesus finished the work of redeeming us through his suffering, death, resurrection. And now that he has ascended into heaven, he reigns, he rules, and it's the it's the start of the end times ever since then. Now, how long will they last? Anybody tells you a date, they're wrong. We don't know how long these days will last. The Apostle Peter reminds us that with the Lord, a a day is like a thousand years and a thousand years like a day. Why doesn't he just come again in glory and just put an end to this? To these difficulties and problems, to this addiction to sin, to the horror of evil among us. Another young man kills a couple of students at his high school. An evil one has done this infected this young man as he infects all of us. Well, our Lord waits to come again in glory because he wants all of us evildoers, all of us who are afflicted with concupiscence, naturally evil since the fall, he wants to turn all of us into his children, children of God, giving us the antidotes bringing us the cure to the virus of our sin and death with his goodness and his life that conquers death. Jesus keeps coming during these end times by his spirit at work through his word. He keeps coming in his gospel to live and reign in our hearts and lives. That's his vocation. That's what he does. 
And this morning we rejoice that he will do that with little Sidney Decker. He will take up residence in her, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and he promises never to leave her nor to forsake her and to reign with his love and his care in her heart and in her life, just like he promises to do for all of us. But she and you need to keep tapping in to this love and grace of God if this reign is to continue to bear fruit in our lives. Because it's through the gospel that we have this power and authority. And it's an everlasting power source that we have in Jesus Christ, who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Through his word, he (laughs) takes out the virus of your sin and death. He just did it again this morning through confession and absolution. That's his work. That's his vocation among us. And then he'll body and blood you together with him to have his goodness flowing through your veins, in your flesh and blood. (laughs) And then what does he do? He gives you all of these gifts for your salvation. And then he sends you out into the world to reign with his love and care for others. To care for those who persecute you. To turn the other cheek to those who slap you in the face. To love your enemies. To do good to those who hurt you because they're really not your enemies. These are people whom our Lord suffered and died for. Your parents, your children, people on the other side of the earth. These are all human beings whom God created and came to redeem in and through Jesus Christ. So Jesus is going out into the world through us as you leave here, through all of us, to do what? He's going out to, through us to bring his forgiveness, his life, and his peace into the world. And God knows it needs it. We need it. We need not less of the word of God and his gospel. We need more. That's why we have a school. That's why we want you here every single Lord's Day. That's why we want you tapping into these gifts every single day, just like you plug in your phone. You need the Lord's reign of love and peace in your life, and the world needs it too. So the apostle tells us, don't grow weary in doing good. Good wins. The war over sin and death has been won. Death is a defeated enemy. The evil one is a defeated enemy. He can harm you no more. Do not grow weary in doing good, as the prophet Malachi reminds us, before the great and awesome day. Because then, what will God do? God will turn the hearts of fathers to their children and the hearts of their children to their fathers. Did you catch that? So all of this conflict, even within families, what does God do? He fixes it. Through the forgiveness of sins, he reconciles us with God and one another through the forgiveness of sins. And then what are we told? When these things begin to take place, straighten up and raise your heads because your redemption is drawing near. God is coming among us, not to destroy us, but to give us life with him and one another throughout all eternity. In closing, one of my favorite Energizer Bunny commercials is the one where Darth Vader, the personification of evil, takes his lightsaber and is about to go for the kill of the Energizer Bunny. And at that moment, when he's about to just slit his throat, the power goes out. The battery dies. Oops. Boy, that hurt. (laughs) Can't really get into this here. (laughs) Not that much. The power goes out. Now, our Lord, through his death and resurrection, he has literally disarmed the forces of evil now. That's what we hear from St. Paul in Colossians. We hear that he has disarmed the forces of hell. They can't harm you anymore. And as the... Apostle Paul also reminds us in Romans, he says, look, during these end days when you're reminded of your mortality as you see your loved ones die and 
As you see outside in nature, you know, everything's dying, it's cold and dark. And as you think about the end of the world and, and the end of your life, St. Paul reminds us that neither death nor life, neither angels nor rulers nor any powers, neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate you from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. You will be still going with God and one another throughout all eternity in paradise. Amen. Now may the peace of God that surpasses all understanding guard our hearts and our lives in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. It's dangerous up here. <laughs> Let us pray. Holy God, mighty Lord, hear your people as they pray and grant to them all things needful and beneficial according to your gracious promise in Christ our Lord. Praise to you, O Lord, for you have done marvelous things and laid bare your arm to save your people. Deliver your church from all our enemies, from those who battle against your word. Sustain us through the fears and trials of these latter days. Raise up faithful pastors who will secure your people in faith through the ministry of your word and sacraments. Bless those preparing for full-time church work and considering church work vocations. Bless all of our staff here at Trinity, especially this week we pray for Tricia Martins, our children's choir director. Lord, in your mercy. Glory to you, O Lord, for you have remembered your steadfast love to your people and redeemed them through the blood of your only Son. We thank you today for the 11th birthday of William Lipom, for the baptism of Sidney Decker. Strengthen all of your people in their baptismal identity as your children and their vocation of worship, witness, love, and mercy work. Bless our congregation and those whom you call and gather here by your word and spirit. Lord, in your mercy. Holy are you, O Lord, and mighty. You will judge the world with righteousness and your people with equity. Bless us with good and faithful leaders and government to serve your purpose, defend your people, punish the evildoer, and encourage virtue. Make us especially mindful of the, those, the least of these, the least able to defend themselves, especially the unborn and the aged. Raise up those who will serve the cause of peace among the nations. Lord, in your mercy. Faithful God, you've given us rich and abundant promises. You promise to be with us in all adversity and need. Be with those who cry to you in any need of body, mind, or soul. Grant them grace sufficient for all their needs. We pray especially that you would bring healing and care to Daryl, who will receive cancer treatment and then surgery. Steve, living with ALS. Jean, living with pulmonary fibrosis. Liz, living with a neurological condition. Bruce, undergoing therapy for Bernadette, Sue, Rosie, Ray, Christina, Bill, and Richard, all in treatment for cancer. For Brandon, in extended physical therapy. Terry, in rehabilitation. Deborah, for continued management of her illness. Bob, undergoing further tests. Alan, who has Alzheimer's disease. Eunice, who is hospitalized. Glory, in declining health. For Andrew and William, recovering at home after being hospitalized with an illness. Denise Haling, who will have back surgery this week. For Gary Melcher's father, Jean. Deliver each of these from their illness according to your will and grant them to rest upon the firm foundation of your grace and favor and to keep them through the days of their trial. Lord, in your mercy. We give you thanks, O Lord, for the gift of family. We pray you to bless the homes in which your people dwell. Make them to be places of blessing and peace where your word is front and center and faith is preserved and passed on to children and grandchildren. Lord, in your mercy. Oh, blessed Lord, you have promised never to abandon us and to always to provide us for all that we need for this day and eternal life. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, hear all the prayers of your people and grant them all good things for your mercy's sake. To you alone, the eternal God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be glory both now and forevermore. Amen. Please be seated. As we gather together the offering, we invite you to fill out the friendship register.
Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who having created all things, took on human flesh and was born of the Virgin Mary. For our sake he died on the cross and rose from the dead to put an end to death thus fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us to do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Amen. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you've given us a foretaste of the feast to come and the Holy Supper of your Son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage, that on the day of his coming we may, together with all your saints, celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.